The social simulation series Animal Crossing has long been known for its intricate digital museums, and with a recent update to the newest Animal Crossing game, New Horizons, the museum is once again at the forefront of the player experience. With the addition of an art gallery and an in-game museum-focused event, New Horizons is going all in on antiquities. The art gallery was added in a late April 2020 update and allows players to no longer just collect fish, insects, and extinct leviathans, but also the works of the masters. Now a bit about the museum we didn't mention in our last video is how Blathers, the museum curator, always offers you some special insight into the items you've donated. As such, the museums of New Horizons make a compelling argument that Animal Crossing should not just be categorized as a social simulation game, but an educational social simulation game. Players can learn all sorts of interesting trivia about the dinos, fish, and insects housed in the many wings of the museum, and now they can learn about great works of classic art. However, before you're able to learn about these paintings, sculptures, and statues, you must collect one. And collecting these works of art can be a struggle. The donation process is the same as with any other item Blathers may wish to acquire for the museum's vast collections, but with a catch not present when donating a fossil fish or fluttering insect. Your artistic work, unlike the wildlife on the island, may be fake. Though these works of art may occasionally be available in the Nook's shop, their primary method of acquisition is from the vulpine trickster Crazy Red, or Jolly Red as he appears in New Horizons. In pre-New Leaf Animal Crossing games, it was impossible to tell if a painting was real or fake, as the models in the game were the same regardless. Unless you purchased a painting from Tom Nook, there was a 50-50 chance that the painting you acquired would be a forgery. Acquiring art from Crazy Red was a gamble, but in New Leaf, forged paintings now bore subtle differences from the genuine article, such as the hand position of the Mona Lisa being swapped in its forged version. However, discerning such differences was predicated on knowledge of the original work of art, and though all the works of art in Animal Crossing are in fact real paintings, they are not named as such in the game. Da Vinci's Mona Lisa is famous painting, and his lady with an ermine is serene painting. Middle school Jake knew the Mona Lisa for sure, but anything beyond that was completely outside the scope of my knowledge of art history, so it was impossible for me to tell if a painting was real or not. To me, it was still totally a gamble. But now in 2020, I'm a little older, a little wiser, and a little more knowledgeable in the world of fine art, and when that knowledge fails, I am more proficient in the language of Google than I was in the mid-2000s. For example, I can now Google something like, painting of man in a red sash, and discover that the painting I'm looking at is Rembrandt's The Night Watch. I'm not gonna dare try to pronounce its original Dutch name. And this is exactly the kind of thing I love about Animal Crossing. I've learned so much from these games. In fact, let me take you on a brief tour of what I've learned since Jolly Red first appeared on my island. The first painting I was able to buy from Red was one from Van Gogh's Sunflowers series, which, as part of the player's introduction to Red, was the only painting available to purchase, as during his first visit his boat will still be off limits to players and Red will only have one painting available to purchase directly off his person. On Red's second visit to my island, I was finally able to board his crusty vessel. Not knowing at the time that this subject of art certification might make for an interesting video, I did not document all the pieces available, only the one I knew to be a fake, and then the one I didn't realize was fake but bought anyway. I do remember a Rosetta Stone being available for purchase, but I couldn't tell if it was real or not, and I can't remember what the fourth available work was. In hindsight, I think the Rosetta Stone was probably the genuine piece of the bunch, as Red was attempting to pawn off a forged version of Girl with a Pearl Earring and Da Vinci's Lady with an Ermine. But that was April 26, 2020, and Red wouldn't again show his face on my shores until May 6th, when he would bring along two genuine artworks to make up for the fake he'd sold to me more than a week prior. Among the genuine works Red would bring to my island was Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, which having already seen the infamous forgery make the rounds on Twitter earlier that month was an instant purchase for me. The other genuine painting Red had available was Tosuai Shiraku's Otani Onji as Yoko Adobe, which through the beauty of the internet found a home on another island. It was somewhat difficult to discern the authenticity of the Shiraku as the spotlight Red had blasted onto the painting obscured much of the detail in Onji's face and hands, but knowing what errors were present in other works, I figured it was the real thing and didn't feel bad about letting another player purchase it. Red brought two forgeries this trip, both of which had very subtle errors. First was another Rembrandt, the Night Watch, which I mentioned earlier. 
In the real painting, the man in a red sash is wearing a hat. In the forgery, his locks flow free. Second was a forgery of Diego Velasquez's The Ladies in Waiting, which had an even subtler error to spot. In the background of the image is a man standing in what appears to be a doorway. In the real painting, his arm appears to be holding open the door or leaning on the doorframe. In the fake, his arm is raised slightly. It would be another two weeks before Red returned to my shores, plopping his boat at my northmost beach on May 20th, and bringing with him some very bold fakes, especially given his previous visits to my island. First up was yet another Da Vinci, the Vitruvian Man, which prominently featured a huge coffee stain in the corner. Now, this seemed like a pretty obvious error, but I wanted to be sure. The Vitruvian Man is dated as being created in 1490, near 150 years before coffee would arrive in Europe, according to another brief Google search. This was Red's most blatant attempt yet to get me to purchase his huckster's wares. Next up was another bold sell, but for different reasons. Once again, he'd brought along a version of Shiraku Zitani Oji as Yako Adobe, and having already seen and sent away the genuine version, this forgery was even more obvious. Like with the infamous Mona Lisa forgery, the tell is in the eyebrows. The third fake Red brought along was Beauty Looking Back, a 17th century work by Hishikawa Moronobu. In the genuine painting, there's a small white hair accessory above Beauty's shoulder, an accessory absent from the forgery Red had hoped to sell. The only genuine work Red brought along for this trip was Paul Cezanne's Apples and Oranges, a still life from 1900. I added this work to the museum's art gallery the same week I completed the fossil exhibition, and at this rate it will take much longer to accurately and completely supply the art gallery than it did to dig up and assemble New Horizons' many fossils. In the eight weeks since New Horizons' launch, I've been able to dig up and identify all of New Horizons' 70-plus unique fossils, but in the five weeks since Red has had his wares available for purchase, I've only acquired three genuine paintings. We're gonna be here a while. But what is this video all about? Well, I said at the beginning, I think that Animal Crossing, in all its many variations, with the possible and obvious exceptions of Happy Home Designer and Amiibo Festival, should be considered an educational game. Edutainment games, as they're often called. But unlike Math Blaster and Mavis Beacon teaches typing, Animal Crossing is teaching you about history, ecology, and culture. In the five weeks since the Art Gallery DLC released, I've been introduced to so many artists I only tangentially knew of or didn't know of at all. I knew Da Vinci, of course, for the Mona Lisa and Vitruvian Man, but I'd never before seen Lady with an Ermine. I knew Van Gogh, but I couldn't have told you of anything he made besides his self-portraits and Starry Night. And Shiraku, Velasquez, Moronobu, and Suzanne have all been new names to me. Names I likely would not have learned anytime soon if not for Animal Crossing. So with the world still trapped at home for the most part, and real-world academic classes and graduations moving to the digital worlds of Animal Crossing, maybe your next art history or art appreciation class will also take place in the Museum of New Horizons. Hey everybody, this is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.